bringing the people behind our food to life. I grew up on a farm. My parents still have a farm back in Michigan. I grew up on a dairy farm, actually. During the 80s, I saw what my parents went through with the farm crisis, and it was really hard for me as a child to see how they struggled and how they worked you know, eight days a week, 36 hours a day, and yet they still couldn't make ends meet. When I grew up and I had a chance to make a decision about what I wanted to do, Farming seemed like something I wanted to really work on because farmers are folks like my parents who are the salt of the earth and they are working like mad to feed our communities and yet for the most part they're not making even a living wage and so um, my, my roots essentially took me to the issues of farming and community organizing and becoming a farm and food activist. Out of college, I had the opportunity to go and work for the Michigan Senate as a legislative aide. And so I got to see firsthand kind of how agricultural policy was made. Agriculture really has been in my blood all my life. I was my dad's um, hired man until I went off to college. And then on the summers, I'd come back and work on the farm. I didn't know that I wanted to be a farmer until I started really paying attention to farm and food issues. And I have been everything from a vegetarian to a vegan to a, well, a meat eater before being a vegetarian. And now I've been, I've circled back and I, I consider myself a humanitarian, not a humanitarian, a humanitarian <laughs> because um, I, I now eat meat that I raise or I know how it was raised. I have always loved pigs. When I was a kid, I wanted a pig so bad, and my dad would not have any of it. See, <laughs> it's a never-ending process. Usually what we'll, we'll do is just leave the hose running for a while, and we'll have a mud bath. Oh, poor Gretel. So hot, huh? It just helps them to keep cool when we get these first few hot summer days. I had a chance to spend a considerable amount of time in Iowa with uh, Paul Willis at Nyman Ranch Pork Company. This might be just a lost cause for the time being. I just let her have a mud bath. It was such an enlightening experience to me. I guess I didn't really know that pigs could be raised that way. He raised them outside and he farrowed outside. Um, the pigs were never confined. And so that particular experience rekindled my love affair with pigs. And as soon as I could get a pig of my own, I got two and started to breed them. Hazel's on the left and Elby's on the right. We actually are crossing two heritage breeds. Um, the red pigs are called Tamworth. It's actually known as the bacon pig. It's a very lean pig. We're crossing them with the large black, which is another heritage breed. They're a pig that gets a lot of their nutrition from grazing. They're a forager. I am committed to raising our pigs outside on pasture. I absolutely refuse to confine our pigs at any time. No farrowing crates, no gestation crates. But you can't just take a pig and throw them in a field and expect that you can have a successful mama if they haven't, if their genetics have been changed so they no longer know how to do that. By picking the heritage breeds, we're picking pigs that know how to be hardy and go outside and come in when it's, it's inclement outside. They know how to raise their young. They're good parents. My husband and I, we both work day jobs, and so farming is it's a second job for both of us. It's our third job. We also are raising heritage turkeys, and we're doing this year for the first time um, heritage meat birds. At some point, we'd like to be able to have enough of, a, of an income stream so that the farm can support my husband's income, which we hope will happen within the next year. So Elby's a large black. He makes babies. 
LB is the quintessential making bacon. That's the only thing he's supposed to be doing. And he's just an absolute love. I think it's really important both wearing my advocacy hat and wearing my farmer hat that consumers know where their food is coming from, they know how their food is, is being raised, and that they self-certify it. If you can get to the farm and get to know your farmer, the only way you, you know if you are okay, if you see it for yourself. You, know, you can't always trust third-party certifications. You are shedding. The lawmakers want you to think that if you're not a farmer, that you don't have a say. But the truth is, consumers have a stake in agricultural policy. Without consumers, farmers wouldn't exist. If you're going to eat food and you're excited to support your local farmers and you're excited to go to the farm and meet the animals, then you should really be as equally driven to make a call, write a letter, do what you have to do to make sure that the policies that are passed in your areas actually support the kind of food and the kind of people that you want to see producing that food. They bring a lot of joy, for sure. The pigs that turn into pork that you buy traditionally in, at your supermarket are pigs that are raised in barns um, with lots of pigs. And so it's, it's economies of scale.